Hello and welcome. You are listening to Real Laughs for Wednesday, July 8th. I am your host, Mike Hurley. I am joined in studio, as always, with us. Well, I guess, where are we now? We are a co-op of comedians. Is that yeah, what we're right. doing with this? We got to do a different C, bro. It's got to start with yeah. C, right? Yeah. So I'm joined by the Mr. James Yon. James, how are you doing tonight? I am great. And Mike, you are doing a fantastic job, sir. Thank you. You actually look like Samuel Jackson on vacation right now. That's what you <laughs> look like. You. you got the oh, hat, you're you. sipping the tea. You're like, I yeah. like this not having to take the big yeah. chair every now and then. I don't have right. to do nothing today <laughs> but use my voice and I'm not yelling. This is our talk. I, I feel like Michelle's going to walk in and tell you to keep it down or else. Yo. I really do. <laughs> also joining us in <sighs> studio, as always, the hilarious Mr. Miguel Colon Jr. Miguel, what's up, man? What's up, man? I'm looking at James. He looks like like the head of the Detroit Zoo. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we ain't got no zoo. animals. Uh-uh. <laughs> Just all a variety of pit bulls and a possum that won't leave. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> and a cat named Freckles. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you do have like a Fat Boys Run DMC goes on African Safari thing going for you tonight. You I'll really take do. That. I'll take, take that. Take that. Take that. I'll take and that. of course, we're also joined by the godfather of Orlando comedy, Mr. Ken Miller. Ken, what's up, man? What's up, brothers? What's going on, man? I'm oh, chilling. Good. Keeping it gangster. Well, guys, I want to get right into this because we got some uh, pretty pretty special stuff going on today. First of all, some happy birthdays out there. Uh, Jaden Smith, uh, Will Smith's son, is 21. Uh, we got Beck. Beck uh, is 49. Toby Keith, of course, 58. And here's the guy that really interests me because I think uh, I don't remember my life without him in it. Mr. Kevin Bacon turned 61 years True. old today. Mr. Kevin Bacon. Now, uh, if you guys know anything about movies, uh, there's a thing out there called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Have you guys ever played that? Yeah. Yes, we have. Uh, the basic premise is you can't name an actor who can't be attached to Kevin Bacon within six movies. And the reason for that could be that the guy's done like 63 movies since 1978. Uh Ken, you keep shaking your head. Have you never seen a movie with Kevin Bacon, which wouldn't surprise me at all, to tell you the truth? Uh, I probably have, man. What? Yeah. Man, okay. You probably Let's start have. The beginning. Yeah, Let's let me look up Kevin Bacon. Let me look up Kevin Bacon. Have you seen the movie Footloose, the original? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's okay, Kevin Bacon. That, that was Kevin Bacon. Uh, a word up? Yeah. Yeah, a word. <laughs> you know, Yo, you know the funniest horribly, bro. <laughs> the funniest thing about Footloose to me is the whole movie is about a town of white people fighting for the right to be able to dance. And they finally get at the end, but in the last scene, you see the one black guy for the first time in the whole movie, and he's dancing better than everybody. And they're like, "Well, we're done with this." Yeah, he, done. He, <laughs> waited, he waited to move into that day. Yeah. He Bruh. got the word. <laughs> he got the Zillow app notification. He was like, "We can dance again." Come on, Sheree, yeah. baby, we moving back to the town. Yo, and I, I feel like I feel like the pastor was going, "Now, now, do you yeah. see why we were trying to keep the dancing out? Now, does it make sense? Is this why Cadillacs yeah. are illegal here too? Now I get it." Yeah, uh, yo, white. White dancing matters, baby. Yeah. yeah. He was also, I think his first movie that he actually got major credit for was Animal House. He played one of those yeah. ROTC oh, guys. He was, he was, yeah, yeah. That, wow, that's right. Yep. What's your so, favorite Kevin Bacon movie, man? Because I love Sleepers. I know that's not his greatest movie. I was going to say I got three movies that Kevin Bacon was dope in. I like his grittier movies, his darker movies, and Sleepers. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. was definitely out of that realm, man. I love yeah. Sleepers, but I love Mystic River. Oh yeah, yeah. Mike loves it. Yeah, yeah that's good <laughs> I will burn this theater down. Down, <laughs> yo, and, that uh, was the movie. That was yeah. Mystic River. Yeah, yeah, Mystic River. He wanted to see it so bad, like yo, I will kill in here. I drew up forty five minutes. One, yeah, one other one that I don't know if a lot of people know about it or seen it, but he's great in it. And Trimmers, Stir of Echoes. Right. Oh yeah, Stir of Echoes is great. Yeah, Stir of Echoes well, is a great movie. I don't think I've seen it. It's a it's a it. horror yeah, movie, man. It's really good. And then, of mm. course, Trimmers. Let's not forget Trimmers. That movie's it was fantastic. A good movie. That movie's fantastic. It's got Reba McIntyre. Yeah, I found out while I was looking into it. He was actually in Friday the Thirteenth. I never picked up. Yeah, on it that. was really. Yeah, was he was, one of the yeah. the kids or? Oh, yeah, because he was young then. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was just what? his character was just Jack or Jake. What? Who did he play in X Men First Class? Uh, he's the main bad Seb- guy. No, he was. Uh, yeah, he was Sebastian. Whatever. Shaw. Sebastian Shaw, Shaw. Part of the, the uh, bad guy. part of the yeah. circle of uh, what was it? The, hell, the, uh, the Hellfire, 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 Club. Hellfire Club. But they also made his character the guy who was uh, working in the concentration camps, experimenting on 
uh, prisoners who experimented yeah. on Magneto when he was a young boy, got him angry to bring his powers out and yeah. stuff like Ooh, that. Ken's got, the, Ken's got the face I have whenever anybody uh, explains Friday <laughs> after next, because I know I watched it, but people are like, yeah, and then they had a rib <laughs> restaurant. I'm like, when, when did that? I okay, don't remember yeah. any of that. I'm, I'm looking through his movies, yo, and I got to say, okay. my favorite would be the air up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Damn. that was when Hollywood can make you believe it took a white guy going to Africa to teach black <laughs> people how to play basketball. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, let me show let me show you how this works. This is so common now. There's actually an app out there called Six Degrees. And basically, you know how we used to do this game where it's like, let's try and link this guy to Kevin Bacon? Yeah. Well, now uh -huh. you don't even need that. You got this app right here. You don't have to sit around talking or have a conversation. Ken, name an actor. Name anyone actor. Name an actor. Oh, you my like. favorite actor, baby. Give it up for Denzel Washington. All right, mm. Denzel Washington. Let's see. I what... turn into Denzel every time I fight with my wife, and I'm like telling her <laughs> she's right. I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. You ready for this? Go ahead. You ready for this? Go ahead. Go ahead. Here we go. They did it. They did it in two. They did it in two steps. Denzel Washington was in John Q. You remember John Q? Yeah, yeah. which is heart for son. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Kevin Connolly, who was in Beyond All Boundaries with Kevin Bacon. Wait, Done. which one's oh, Kevin oh. Connolly? Some yeah, Irish actor. Guy. Yeah. Know, yeah. Kevin Con uh man, I feel like I, I know Kevin Connolly from something. But I, He's I, one of those guys that as, you, as soon as you see his face, you're like, oh, yeah, that guy. Uh, go ahead, Miguel. Name an actor while I got that this was, open. Yeah, that okay. Uh, <laughs> let's go with, I'm, I'm trying to make it hard, but not be ridiculous yeah, yeah. And stupid. Like, I'm not going to name some fake European actor. Uh, like, you know, be like, oh, 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 oh I got what I got what uh, uh, James Woods. Oh, good man. Very yeah, good. but those guys around that time, the height of their popularity, they had to do something close together, right? That's true, Let's man, see. because. Let's see. James Woods was in Killer, a journal of a murder with Jeffrey DeMunn, who was in enormous changes at the last minute with Kevin Bacon. I've heard of none of that. But I'm about it was, to say, I think, I think it's just faking it now. <laughs> it, was, it, was still, it was still only two steps. James, what you got, man? All right, this might stump you, so don't get mad at me. No, I'm but gonna I'm gonna go you. with I'm gonna go with Betty White. Betty White. Oh, that's a sneaky one. I like yeah, it. Yeah, you did. That was a sneaky one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh man, two steps. Betty what? White was in bringing down the house with Queen Latifah, who was that's in beauty right. shop with, with Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Damn. Man, oh this guy's untouchable, dude. Dude. Or Gets very from the silent film era. <laughs> Harley, yo, 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 okay, I got one. I got one. Yeah, what what's you got? The, what's the youngest Hemsworth? Liam, right? Uh, Liam, Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah, because he got a movie coming out on on, on, on Quibi. <laughs> With, wow, that's just right above Dude, the neighborhood block. You, you're, you're not going to one. You're, you're not going to believe this, man. What's Liam that? Hemsworth was in the Hunger Games with Jennifer Lawrence, who was an X Men first class with wow, Kevin Bacon. Man, dude, you know who I got that stumped the system, and I think we can beat it. I think we can figure it out. Beyonce. I put in Beyonce. Well, she played uh, something with James Woods or, J or, J or James Earl Jones. And well, Beyonce was in Gold Member with Mike Myers. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I should be able to go Mike Myers and see who that hooks up to, right? And yeah, and, and, and then too. if it, yeah, and then you've got um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Childish Gambino was it, in Spider Man. Here we go, Mike, Mike Myers. Keaton. So Beyonce was in Gold Member with Mike Myers. Mike Myers was the, in the Cat in the Hat with Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston was in Death Sentence with guess who? Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Damn, Kevin Bacon. Man, Bacon. Man. that guy's he's got like, it, man. He's like Visa. He's everywhere you yeah. want to be, bro. Put, well, in me, put in Mia Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I think I think when it comes to that, it's about one step to Mia Khalifa for most yeah. NBA players. Yeah. So, um, but uh, here's oh. the thing: you might be seeing Kevin Bacon or any of these actors coming up shortly in a Walmart parking lot near you. Uh, apparently, Walmart has just announced that they're turning 160 of their parking lots into drive-in movie theaters due to the epidemic or pandemic. What? I apologize. Yeah. Which makes me go: finally, are they? going to clear those dirty diapers out of the parking lot so we have some uh, place to uh, uh, there's going to be 500 uh, cars uh, and still just one person parking them and yep. then the rest yeah. is just, you know, <laughs> and she's about to go on break and she's mad uh, at you 
for asking hey, her where to park. What they don't tell you is the movie that they show you is from the five dollar bin in the oh, store. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be Air Bud Part Five. I was thinking yeah. Air Bud also. <laughs> I was like, Airbud Seven. This time he's a sports yeah. manager. All right. Yeah, I was tell- I was funny because my wife was telling me this story, and I was like, the dirtiest parking lot of any any store is Walmart. Mm-hmm. Like you gonna post yeah. up there, like you said, dirty diapers flying everywhere. <laughs> Dude, literally every time I go to Walmart recently, there's a mask and gloves mm-hmm. just on the ground. On yep. the ground. Yep. Yeah. Where do you? Uh, when do you guys think you're gonna get your bonkers date at the Walmart parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just, <laughs> you can't tell me they're not going to turn those. They're not going to turn those security booths into the projectionist booth. You know, uh, that's that's <laughs> would you go? Would you go? I mean, I got to tell you, man, Lakeland. I think they got the Silver Moon driving, if I'm not mistaken, and they're doing like multiple. Like you can go and see. Uh, I think it's uh, oh, Little Shop of Horror. It's like a double feature with something else and. My parents used to take me to drive-ins when I was a kid, man. And I mean, it was up north, so the weather was a little cooler during the fall and stuff. But I- I'm thinking, man. I'm thinking maybe I'll give it a shot. Have you guys done any drive-in movies lately? I have yeah, never, have. I've never been to one in my life, man. And I, I would go really? to okay. Yeah. yeah. I've never been. I would love to oh, go. Man. I wouldn't go to the Walmart parking lot one because that just sounds like trouble. <laughs> like, you want to go to the Walmart parking lot? All, already sounds like 16-year-old kids trying to drink a bottle of Mad Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, we have, we've been, that's all we've been doing is we, we've been to um, – Epic Theater has um, the drive-in on the side of their building. Uh, we I went to see the first Harry Potter. That was the first time I ever saw it. And then last week we took the girls to go see um, Avengers. Mm-hmm. But uh, Michael B. Jordan. How did they do doing, the town? Um, do the radio on one hundred one point four. Oh, you, you, you don't get the, the big silver on. box that slips no. into your window anymore. No, no. But Ocala has a drive-in, and uh, Michael B. Jordan is doing something like a. It's like a Black Movie Month for July. And mm-hmm. so every Wednesday from July and August, he's playing movies. So me and Sean got passes pretty much every Wednesday. So tonight, I mean, excuse me, last week was um, um, Love and Basketball and Crazy crazy Rich Asians. And then next week, we're going to see Black Panther and Creed. Then the following week, Ooh. we're going to see Spider-Man and into, um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and Hook. And then the following week, they got Do the Right Thing and Get Out. And then the week after that, they got Coming to America and Girls Trip. Nice, nice, man. So, I don't well, know hey how guys. Hook got into the black movie thing, but oh well. <laughs> we, I'm in that movie. We, we gotta, I'm, in, I'm in Hook. We got to take a break real quick, but don't go anywhere, because when we get back, we're going to be talking about a very special holiday today, National Video Game Day. So you know these guys are going to have something to say about it. Stay tuned right here, Real Laughs. Welcome back. You are still listening to Real Laughs, and I'm still Mike Hurley. I'm joined in studio with James Young, Miguel Colon Jr., and, of course, Mr. Ken Miller. Now, guys, uh, you know on the show we talk a lot about holidays that people don't really know about, and today is one of those holidays, although I'm sure a lot of our listeners happen to celebrate this religiously. It is July 8th, which means National Video Game Day, not to be mistaken with its sister holiday, National Video Games Day, celebrated in (laughs) September, which seems like a scam to get two holidays. That's what it really seems like. That's how it is. So basically, it's just a holiday made up to uh, enjoy and appreciate everything that is video games. So you're supposed to celebrate by playing video games, which seems to be what a lot of people do anyway. So my question to you is, uh, you know, I'm in my 40s now and my kids play Xbox. They love all the Lego video games. They love creating their own characters. They love doing all the stuff. I was never... I've never played like an online game. I've never had to play like a headset and talk to people. I've never done the Call of Duty and stuff. But I think my prime was back when my parents got me the first Atari. You know, I was good with that stuff. Mm. But then moved on when the first Nintendo came out. And my game was Contra. Like even without yeah, the yeah, cheat code, bro. I could I could rip yeah. through Contra with a team without. And when you were doing those screens those where you flips, had to jump up, yeah, where you had to go upwards. If you were on my team and you couldn't make the jumps, I was leaving you behind. I'll see you at the end of the wow. Yeah, yeah. You, were like that? you were that guy, dude. It's all about getting to that last alien, right? I gotta yeah. do mm-hmm. it, and I will take the spray gun every time. I don't care if it is your turn. If you don't get there, it's my weapon. So I guess what I'm saying to you is, what was your favorite game when you were a kid, or do you guys still play now? So Ken, are you are you gaming nowadays or what? I don't game anymore. I, like my kids will get me, they get me NBA 2K every year for Father's Day or Christmas, just because <laughs> I have the collection since like 2000. I've had, I have them all. So does I it, just 
I just really change every year that bad? Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah uh, dude, wow. I'm talking about yeah. go look at the graphics from 2000 when I think it came out originally on the Dreamcast mm-hmm. with Allen Iverson. I, I could be wrong, but if you look at it from now to then, it's, it's you know, legit probably one of the best franchise for basketball ever. But my, I'm with you. Contra my son Isaiah plays my it. Game. And it's, it, it's one of the most immersive games you can ever play because you yeah. can create your own character. You can be certain people. You can make yeah. how they look, how they dress. It's, you can go play street mm-hmm. pickup games to get better. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's really... Not you, like you can hit your wife you can, in the NBA or cover yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much. You, can, you, can marry, you can marry all the white now, women you want in that game. Yeah. <laughs> is that through EA Sports? Do they do that? EA Sports. Yeah, they do. yeah, EA. Yeah. yeah. I remember there was one year I was doing comedy. I think it was like 2010, 2011. I was working with this guy named Tim Pulnick, who I just met, and he uh, was going out on tour. And his credit was like the voice of the coach in uh, John Madden's yeah. 2011 or whatever it was. Yeah, Dean's the, Jet, Dean's the Jets' offensive coordinator coach. Yeah, in, right. uh, he loved in, in Madden. Yeah, and Tim is the uh, offense, right? Yeah. I yeah. like to be the voice of the dude selling like uh, steroids in the weight room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but isn't EA boy like I talked to uh, Tim and then Dean later on was like, "Who's going around saying they're the voice? I'm the voice," and they didn't know that they were the different coaches. Like they hadn't even met, so they were both going around with that credit. But apparently, uh, is EA? I think is up in Altamont. Is like it's, the a, it's down the road from it's our studios. Mainland. Yeah, right across, yeah. right across yeah. from our studios. But I guess Dean had to go in and read like five thousand lines or something one day. Probably that's, that's a decent paycheck, right? Yeah, and as an offensive coordinator yes. for the Jets, they were probably like, "Can you make it sound a little bit more like you're sad?" <laughs> like, you yeah. Know? yeah, you know, can yeah. You just, mm, what here, am I doing smoke here? Smoke this mess. Make it authentic. Yeah. So, J- <laughs> James, what about you, man? James, were you a gamer I, when you were coming up? Love games. I was always Team Sega, though. Like, I came up with the Sega Master System first, and I played Shinobi like crazy on that. Then when the Genesis came out, that changed everything. Like, that's when graphics went from 8-bit to a whole whopping 16, and everybody lost their mm-hmm. minds. It was crazy. It was good, though. But um, I'm a, I'm a, I like PlayStation. I'm a PlayStation 4 guy. can't wait for 5 to come out. But I always like all the Mario games, so I got to admit that. My favorite games are on Nintendo. Like, I would play Mario from Super Mario Brothers to Mario 64 to Mario Sunshine, Galaxy, Odyssey, all those things. Me mm-hmm. and my family, we will all play that religiously for hours until we beat it. You I know, love I, Mario. Ju- I just found this out recently. I was talking on another podcast about it. Uh, Mario yeah. originally was first appeared in what? Donkey Kong, right? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a bad guy, right? Okay. Now, did you know that Donkey Kong was originally supposed to be based on the cartoon Popeye? Like the yeah. characters were supposed to be Bluto no. up top, olive oil, and then Popeye was supposed to come up and save them. They lost the rights to Popeye before it was put out. So at the last minute, they scrambled around to just basically insert these characters in. And I guess in the original video game Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong is actually a pet of Mario's that Mario mistreated. And that's why Donkey Kong grew up to be like, this yeah, Mario's that, that got it, erased. Bro. That Mario, got erased from history. Mario's got a bad history of animals. He kills turtles. He yeah. wears yeah. raccoon skin. He keeps yeah. a monkey. He's yeah. on some Kanye-ish. You know? yeah. <laughs> True. What about you, Miguel? Uh, when you were a kid, you into the video game stuff? Yeah, and what man. about now? And do you remember when you used to be able to go to like farm more and grocery stores and they had like a video game and movie rental aisle? That was yes. a big deal to me when like I knew my mom was really cool about like, hey, as long as it wasn't Blockbuster, it was like five ninety nine a game for an hour. <laughs> My mom was cool about being like, let's get you a video game this week. You know, she was always cool about that, man. And so I used to I used to rent a lot of the platformers. And I found something out uh, on Facebook about a year ago. Uh, the Disney games. Some of the Disney games were some of the hardest games out there. Uh, like the Aladdin, Aladdin game. Like yeah, Aladdin. The, uh, the was Mike that King, King- Kingdom Hearts? Was that No, one? that was way before. Way before that, that was NES, like NES. Right? Yeah, and yeah. what I found out when reading this article was it was on like uh, Wired or something that Disney hired its engineers to make the games hard to beat in a one-night rental so that you would have to rent it again for another <laughs> night. Wait a minute. Are you yeah. telling me Disney did something motivated purely for financial gain? I mean, it must have been a fluke because they're known to be saints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. But you know what's funny? When uh, Final Fantasy VII came out on PlayStation, I, I, rent- I-, I got a PlayStation and I rented it and I played it. And I remember being like, okay, I can't let anybody know this. 
but I'm a nerd. Like, <laughs> yeah. like this is the yeah. greatest game I've ever played. And I love Dragon amazing. Warrior and Final Fantasy for NES and Super Nintendo. But when Final Fantasy VII came out, and it was hard to explain it to my buddies because they were like wanting a shoot 'em up or a racing game. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. we're gonna pick words, and then we're gonna yeah. pick potions. <laughs> okay. <guys? laughs> what's, what's the one game that you think you could still even if you haven't played in like 15 years come back and still beat just just mike tyson's teenagers. punch out 0073 oh. 0073735963 takes you right to mike tyson every <laughs> it takes you dodge for a minute and nine seconds his punches then he mm -hmm. opens up and you hit him i got this locked right. down me I, I i sat there timing it when i was a kid to beat mike tyson and then i had to beat mr Ooh. dream Lightning why. quick hook mm -hmm. from Mike Tyson. Yeah. Now, because I have that on Wii, but it's no yeah. longer Mike Tyson's punch out. It's just punch mm -hmm. out. But the yeah. guy looks a lot like Mike Tyson at the Yeah. yeah. They, all, they all look alike, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For me, Mike, it'll be, it'll be Contra. I can still mm -hmm. play Contra. And I, to this day, cannot be beat. And I told you about this earlier, James, in Super Tech, Tech Mobile. Mobile. If really? anybody right. want to come right. over my house, I will hook this Nintendo Is that the up. one with Walter Payton? <laughs> Is that the um, one with Walter Payton? Because he's no, like unstoppable Bo, Bo Jackson. in one of them. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson can be tackled, uh, yeah. If anybody want to come over here, I, I will... Whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> the Nintendo cartridge, I will put it in. But, dude, I had to tell you, Miguel, you were talking about the Blockbuster rental. I have Super Mario Brothers 3. That yeah. I read from Block Blockbuster in when it first came out. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dude, I still Yo. have it. It's in my garage right now. So Blockbuster, it's, they probably I'm the one that put them out of business with one video game, bro. <laughs> That's right. All the late fees added up, baby. One video game was me, baby. I always but thought we had a friend who worked at um the place where they rent your games. He had a mm -hmm. scam going. For mm -hmm. ten dollars, he would sell you the rentals. The actual yeah. game to get the kick. I we used to all do my was, games like that back We used day. to unscrew the back of the game and mm -hmm. switch the game we rented with another game mm -hmm. so that we just constantly keep getting different games. And they would be like, hey, man, this Super Mario brother is Excite Bike. And people like, <laughs> don't pull that scam on us, liar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bruh, I, had a, bike, I had a buddy who worked at Blockbuster in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida, when I was going to college down there. And I used to love calling him up on Friday or Saturday night because – People today don't understand. Blockbuster was one of the only options. Like you got yeah. there and you yeah. immediately went to that back wall where all the new releases you, were and you grabbed whatever was available, not even caring if you were going to like it because you would hold on to that and walk around with it while you looked for something. Currency. Yeah. It was yeah. currency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you'd stand right by there where they're doing the returns when you first yeah. walk in because yeah, you're yo, really yo, looking for something. You be looking to see, hey man, did yo, somebody bring I back called Titanic? It. I called it. I'm on that one. <laughs> bro, but it, it'd be bro, so busy. I'm, I'm on, looking for that free willy. You got that free <laughs> It'd be so busy on Friday and Saturday nights. I used to love calling him up because he was an assistant manager. And I would just call him up and be like, hey, do you guys have that one movie? And he's like, what movie, sir? What movie, sir? <laughs> and I'm like, the one with the girl that was in that other thing with that one guy. And he's like, I don't know it. I think Richard Gere was in it. He's like, pretty woman. I'm like, no, I think there was a prostitute. Pretty woman! No, <laughs> You could just keep him on for like five minutes until they hung up on you. It was great. Do you remember but returning your movie? Like, And, and then you, you go back to a Reddit movie the next day, and they're like, oh, you returned this late. And you're like, you son of a bitch! You know I had that in there at nine a.m. You just didn't, you didn't re put a clock, clock no, it in till noon. No joke. I I borrowed a VHS of Tombstone on my buddy's mom's account because we went in and used her card, and I didn't bring it back until she called me yelling at me. She's Cuban. Called me yelling at me in Spanish because it was up to seventy five dollars. Yeah, that was back when they could charge you more than yeah, the, the worth. You couldn't just go in and pay like twenty. You had to pay because they're like, oh, all the money we lost on that during the rental period. So Blockbuster I paid seventy five bucks when I was yeah. making about seventy five bucks a week at some. They were like the Russian mob. They kept the juice they running were. on everything, and then yeah. they would hit you with stuff like, oh, but you didn't rewind it, so that's like two ninety nine. <laughs> I was gonna say it's just a fun little fact about Blockbuster. There's actually one still operating in America. Alaska. Yep. It's in Alaska, yep. yeah. It's yeah. They have they have bad streaming in Alaska. It is. They have no. It is. It's because their streaming is so bad in in, in, in most areas of Alaska that uh, streaming services don't work well because of the internet. So that one mm -hmm. Blockbuster is still going. Yeah, and they they still got the same system where they have to use their computers for Blockbuster franchise. <laughs> right? But uh, we no <laughs> serious. We're gonna get out of here in just about two minutes. But before I do, uh, I just uh, they actually did a survey 
of a thousand Americans. Uh, this is a PR film out in PR firm out in Portland. Uh, so they asked a thousand Americans, "What's the best gaming console?" So just off the top of your head, real quick, top three gaming consoles. Go ahead. What you got? I'm gonna say number one was PlayStation Two. Okay. Mm. Uh, they're just like, mm. they're yeah. just talking about manufacturer. You don't even need the uh, oh oh PlayStation Nintendo Sony. I'm going with those two. Yeah, Sony. Yeah. Well, I'm going Sony. They got Ken. You got nothing here. No, I'm sorry. Sean came in and started talking to me. Sean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. To not record <laughs> Nintendo. So, I don't even know what the right. question was. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Best gaming consoles. Thirty eight percent said PlayStation. 38% said Xbox, so they tied it up right there. 21% Nintendo. 21% Nintendo. Wow. Now, here, here's something that the was uh, are kind of surprising. What's the best video game franchise? Name the top three. Can you figure it them out? To, it has to be it has Mario. To be PlayStation. You mean like the Super console? Mario. Super no, Mario. Mario. Super Mario, Mario at 47%. It, Here's how I know that when you go, when you go to GameStop and you go to return or trade in a Mario game, it mm -hmm. always retains its value. You can mm -hmm. always resell those games for like thirty bucks. It got to be okay. like an EA Sports game next, like a f football. No, actually, uh, number two, Call of Duty with twenty one percent. Yeah, because all the yeah. online playing. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. the number three, this is surprising. It beat Grand Theft Larry. Auto, so <laughs> 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 Sonic the Hedgehog over everything else is Donkey Kong. Wow. Donkey Kong. I heard. 19%. I heard. Percent. I heard. When it comes to arcade games, because a buddy of mine was looking. At, Busey was looking to buy arcade games. Donkey Kong, Miss Pac Man, two of the most expensive ones you can buy. Wow. Originals. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I see that. Well, guys, we got to take a little break. Uh, when we come back, though, we're going to be talking about. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, this this particular quote unquote event is making a push to become a professional sport. So we'll talk about that when we come back right here on Real Laps. Is it the WNBA? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. You are listening to Real Laughs. My name is Mike Hurley. I'm joined in studio with Miguel Colon Jr., James John, and of course, Mr. Ken Miller. Now, uh, before the break, uh, we were kind of talking about an activity that these people feel like they are not being respected enough by the sporting community. They feel like they have put in their time. They have paid their dues. They are actually mm. athletes, and they are yeah. ready. They are ready mm -hmm. to be seen as the next major sporting event and of course i'm talking about competitive eating that's Hell right yes competitive yeah. Eating. Yeah. now as you guys know july 4th just passed uh every year on july 4th nathan's hot dogs has their annual hot dog eating championship uh this year i believe this guy has won like 13 times since he went professional is it my uh, man co nope it's no it's joe joey chestnut joey yeah, chestnut, okay. joey yeah, chestnut. Yeah. this man yeah. this man uh, I just, we should call him the machine Beast. and respect him for the athlete yeah. he is. Mm -hmm. 75 hot dogs and buns in yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, he looks like the Bro. nephew of a bookmaker, too. <laughs> like he's not the guy. He's just at your door like, come on, man. My Uncle Paul's going to be real peed if I can't get the money. Yeah, mm. you know? that, That's the thing that I learned about these professional leaders. Like, you, you can go to a website. They, they call it Major League Eating. Major League Eating. It's a website. You go to it. This is the body that oversees all eating competitions, all the professional ones. I mean, you can find those back alley, backroom den competitions. But if you want to be legit, you know about major league eating. Uh, this guy, Joey Chestnut, stands about 6'1", weighs about 210 pounds. He's yeah. not. He's not like there's a woman named Sonia Thomas. She's in her 50s, Korean-American, five foot nothing. 100 pounds to 130 she fluctuates she's like the female champion she's she's called the black widow because she puts men to shame she's just this tiny little thing so i wanted to ask you guys number one uh do you think based on the things that are considered sports this qualifies as a sport and number two have you ever personally put yourself into this like james I know you love food, but I don't know if you ever went to this length. And now before before I we go any further, let me tell you, this was the first year that you could legally bet the New Jersey Gaming Board actually approved it. You can now bet on competitive eating champions. Good, good, because oh. I want it to start getting crooked. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to know the Serbian mobs involved in competitive yeah. eating. You want to see a guy yeah. throw a throw a competition every now and then? Yeah, Maybe like look slow. at him. He's point shaving. Look how slow he's going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's look at it. Look, let's look at it like this. If it wants to become a legitimate sport, in football, there's dangers. There's there's safety issues. You can get, break something in football: an arm, a leg, get a concussion. Um, you play baseball. You can you can get a fastball to the temple. You do basketball. You can break an ankle. But in professional eating, you can see a dude hemorrhage. Like that's different. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's a whole, it's a whole another call in professional eating. We're like, this guy's choking. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Choke on his claw. <laughs> so honestly, right now, if, you, if there was money on the table, how many hot dogs do you think you could put away in ten minutes, Ken? Oh, two. <laughs> Damn. Listen here, man. I'm from North Carolina, bro. I love a good Carolina dog, but two hot dogs is enough, bro. The 30 for 30 is my favorite ESPN documentary. It's one of my favorite documentaries about sports. The worst okay. one they have is the eating competition one. They, they have almost, a 30 for 30 eating? Yeah, the eating competition. I never one. saw it. it. Never bro, saw it. It, it just, it's, it's, I think it just came out on last season. It's, I almost threw up watching it. <laughs> it it's the most disgusting thing because they're just, you're cramming them hot yeah. dogs and drinking they water. Them, it they still, dip them in water. Oh. That's the grossest part. Yeah. Talking to you about them. it right now makes my stomach turn. You know, that's yeah. the funniest thing. These guys literally train for this. It's not like, yeah, you got your big guys who think they can just pack some food away, right? But like guys like Joey Chestnut, all year round, they're filling their stomach with like liquids to stretch it out and protein oh. shakes and everything to massage it and make their stomach a little bit bigger. What about you, James? You ever you ever try any of this? You ever they, anyone ever look at you and go, I could I could do 30 wings before you? Or do you ever take those competitions at restaurants where they're like, if you can put away this steak, you can eat for free? I've never done that. I've done, mm -hmm. I could do the steak ones maybe. But like if it involves carbs like bread or breading on chicken wings, bro, nah. You end up being sick. You gonna be. You gonna end up hurting yourself. What, but stupid. what are they naked wings? You do the naked wings? Could you do a, I, uh, eat a, a bunch of naked wings though? I think I could. I mean, because yeah, I, I could can, do it. I if it was wing, mouth, naked wings, wing yeah, out. I could do that. Yeah, bro. yeah breading. Wings, bro. Yeah, I would yeah. you on that. I can't do anything with yeah. breading. What about you, Miguel? You do a lot of stuff over that sausage castle. You guys ever have any eating competitions out there? We, we like do. That? We actually have a sausage eating contest sometimes during like the Drunken Olympics. There's this dude, Big Gucci, <laughs> Big Gucci Berry. He's an internet guy. He's famous for getting kicked in the junk. He's a star, and uh, <laughs> he uh, he'll he'll put away. He'll put away like five kielbasa, which these that nothing in the world of competitive sausage eating. But when you're doing it at like a, at a at a house party, it's a, it's just for fun of, of that. We what we usually do is uh we do a merry go round eating contest where you've got a pound of hot dog, they spin you around the merry go round, you do a shot, and uh, you see how long anybody could last uh, through that. Oh. And it don't, it don't, yeah, it goes bad. It, it's like a Gallagher show. But I'm um, tell you. That's a yeah. lot different than what I, I pictured at the Sausage Castle having an eating contest. I guess, I always yeah. imagine <laughs> it, it would be an eating contest that most black guys wouldn't enter. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't no know if you've been I, Yeah, I'm about to say, I don't know if you've been listening to hip-hop lately, James. Uh, your brothers are celebrating that nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're I, the, I, that's the young ones. Hey, that's the young ones, though, right? I'm lost because yeah, yeah. I'm like, you mean jars of mayonnaise? I don't understand yeah. what oh. we're talking about. <laughs> and literally, James, too, I have sound bites from you being like, I eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yo, let me say yo, this right now. Yo, man. Right now. Yo. Like grocery. All right. Okay. Hey, yes. Guys, I, I got stuff to do later. I can't be editing this all out later yeah. on. All right. <laughs> so, hey, yeah. real quick, though, I know this and I've learned this. Uh, there's a girl I know who's a competitive eater, and she was she told me this, and I, and I believe it. She was saying that a lot of times the reason why uh, the smaller the person can eat more is because like a big guy like me, I have a bunch of fat on my belly, mm -hmm. so my skin and stretching of my stomach is pushing against this layer of rigid fat. Whereas like if me and Mike were training for the same amount of time for competitive eating, Mike's body, because it's more fit, can get to a point where his stomach will stretch out more, whereas mine is, will be competing against the layers of fat. So that's why you see smaller people doing, doing a lot better.
Yeah, that's what I actually, because anytime I start researching or reading into something, I go from, this is ridiculous to, I could do this. You know? hole, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly yeah. what they said. You would think you see those big guys and that doesn't necessarily mean they can eat more. It's It means they have ate more. But when that fat builds up over your stomach, it makes it hard for your stomach to stretch out. Exactly. Yeah. So my question is, if if this becomes like a legit thing and they finally get accepted, because they're talking, they want to go to Olympics and stuff like that. So my question is, is this like a gateway thing? Like if we let if we let them in with competitive eating, what other things that we don't consider sports could quite easily start being like, well, hey, if they're I in, don't, we want in too. I don't know, but I know this is definitely an American edge sport. Like I don't see the Somali team putting it on us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know? And the Sri Lankan team, the Sri Lankan team just entered to eat. They're like taking their time. Yeah. <laughs> That is amazing. Uh, you um, win. You win. Uh, most teams are only four. You brought 152,000 people. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Alternates. Yes. Um. Uh, I know one thing. I wouldn't watch it. I just, it grosses me out, bro. Really? It, it, it's so disgusting. If you dunk, dunk in a hot dog in water, the bread is all wet, and then mm. they're just like, whoa, 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 and it it's just, just like, it oh. reminds me of that scene in Stand By Me where the heavy <laughs> the kid who was made fun of his whole life brought the castor oil and chugged like a gallon of it before he went up on stage and then just uh, projectiled yeah, project all. Yeah. Uh, I don't know you? who's going to make the shoe for it. You know? like <laughs> It's just a commercial with a shoe getting barfed on and it wipes uh, right off. Uh, New balance. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. yeah, no. it, it's no. a yeah. dad sport. Yeah. No, it's got to be Shaq, bro. Because Shaq, a big dude, it got to be a shoe that can enforce some 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 weight. So I'm gonna go Ugh. with Shaq, and it'll be Shaq. The the Emma will be Shaq dunking and eating a hot dog at the same time. <laughs> I'm with that, bro. How about you, James? Any idea of things that should probably not even be considered a sport, but could probably make it okay. in as a sport? This is something I thought about for a while, and I think this thing goes underappreciated. It's hard as hell. It's difficult. Not everybody can do it. I'm going to say parenthood should be a damn Olympic sport. That's right. And you get points taken off for how your kids turn out. Like, if your kid gets arrested, <laughs> that's a point off. Uh, now, kid goes to jail, yeah. that's a point. He gets, hey, uh, getting a girl pregnant at 16, you get some points off. I think parents... Should be basically gold medals. That's a long game. That's like a baseball game, right there, man. That's it is. Yeah. Too. <laughs> I get bored and turn it off after like yeah. three uh, <laughs> crazy relay races, though, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you got to hand off the baby, diaper it. Yeah. <laughs> Qual you get, you get excited. You spike the baby. Like, <laughs> 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 Parenthood yeah. should be a sport, brother. Can't more, bet on it, so I'm out. There are people outside your relationship when you have kids, like, he ain't going to make it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'll take those yeah. odds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, by, by, before that kid three years old, they're going to take that baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm I calling them DCF them right now. Yeah. That's fine. That kid going to be one who starts fires. So, <laughs> so, so real quick, because we only got a couple of minutes. If you had to make a sport based around something that you know you could be a champion at, what would the sport be? Competitive uh, parallel parking. <laughs> Are you good at it? Are you oh, good man. at it? Yeah, because I always had like Cadillacs and Lincolns when I was younger and stuff, like late, late mm -hmm. model ones. And I drove, a, I drove trucks for like Aramark box trucks and Penske trucks. So like, I'm, I impress myself with with knowing exactly where to pull to then yeah. just swipe it back in. Yeah, I bet you could even do that cool little full speed throw it in oh, drift dude, the in, thing? The little yeah. drift. <laughs> and then what my I, father, my father always had big cars, man. So I used to watch him. Just he's a little guy, do the cool. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, it. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all it takes to parallel park. You ever you ever parallel park with someone your passenger side and they're like, "Did I get close?" And you open up and you're like, "Yeah, I got to take a taxi to the curb." But yeah. I mean, you're you're close. But what what about what about you, Ken? Man, what what's the one thing? Is it lawn mowing? Is that where you're no, at nowadays? It's gonna be it's gonna be so silly, bro. In Smoking. the past month. The the dishwasher broke. I am I would win a gold medal in washing dishes, bro. I am, I, I Wait a minute, washing medal, and, including drying or just and, washing? And, uh, washing and drying, bro. Like ever since like to, for the to the point where like tomorrow I'm I'm telling my wife we gotta go get a new dishwasher. Dude, I'm tired. Let, let, <laughs> let me tell you that, something though. I managed restaurants for years and I would walk in being the night manager and automatically go to the dish pit and just start washing dishes to catch us up. 
And it was like the most zen thing. There's nothing more satisfying than starting with a sink full of dirty stuff and knowing it's it's the smallest like set a goal accomplishment you can do. But in my world, that's the biggest. And, accomplishment and you ain't got to work late because you done knock some of this stuff out. Right. You know what and, I, mean? I used and, to work in the restaurant too. So washing dishes late was the worst, man. As the manager, everybody will come up and see you working and they go, I ain't bothering him and I better yeah. look busy. Because if the manager's doing yep. something besides playing solitaire in the back, everybody better be moving around, you know? What about you, James? True. One thing you could knock out and be the champion of overnight. Hmm. Damn, that's hard, man. I could um, see you doing some of those cooking competitions, man. I could, but that's already a sport, though. I mean, well, mm-hmm. is it? It's not a real sport yet. You yeah. know, they, they yeah. do competitions about it. But if they really had a competition where you had thirty minutes to make a full meal and then get judged on it, that's truly a competition. People don't yeah, realize that's your life every night. Every you know, night, thirty yes. minutes to make a meal and then get judged on <laughs> it. You, you can't you can't get Bro. through the McDonald's drive through in thirty minutes anymore. Yeah. So and I'm what glad w- you said that, Miguel, because tonight in thirty minutes I prepared sirloin steak shrimp scampi baked potatoes and a vegetable medley so yeah, yeah bro yeah. I'm, I'm definitely so you've that, earned bro. the right to wear that stupid hat i you know? have <laughs> man I have. We, we we gotta do a segment one time because i don't cook but i'd like to like it's at the point now where i go out to get fast food and i know i'm not even gonna like the taste i just have no other option because i never learned to do anything else we should do a segment sometime where you can just talk to guys like yeah. me and help me out. Something I can make quick, fast, and taste delicious. Mike, get yeah, an air fryer. I mean? Get an air fryer to yeah, cook. get an air fryer. And you know what I learned real quick, Mike? I know we got to go. I've learned that I've spent so much money, and I think Ken came to the same conclusion, eating out. Eating I out, wasted bro. so, so much, much, money. much money. And I and, and I have no excuse. I know how to cook all the food I go eat. Mm-hmm. So I've learned something since we had this little quarantine, man. I'm saving so much money by cooking that food at home. You will yeah. not, you you won't believe how much money you save, Mike. Once oh, you start I, I, I believe it, man. When I'm when I'm just doing my taxes at the end of the years and just writing off the fast food for traveling, it's yes. ridiculous. It's ridiculous, yeah, it is. man. But uh, hey, guys, thanks for listening to this Wednesday episode of Real Laughs. Uh, on behalf of Miguel Colon Jr., James Jean, Ken Miller, we appreciate you listening. Be sure to check us out on the iHeart app. Also, tune in on YouTube. You can see what you've been hearing. And be sure to check out the other uh, shows here on 104.1 on the iHeart app. we got Monsters in the Morning, News Junkie, Jim Colbert, and of course, Tom and Dan. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you tomorrow.